Today, we're really happy to have with us uh, uh, Mohammed Ishak Niazman, who is a, uh, a leader in Afghanistan from uh, who lives in Jalalabad, as well as he has a home in, in Kabul. Um, but we met uh, uh, Ishak, uh, oh, we started the project in 2010. 2010. 2010. A very interesting story uh, for me. Uh, it was actually the beginning of the Conflict and Development Center, because in 2010 I was in India when uh, Howard Buffett asked if I could go guide him around agriculture in Afghanistan. So we, I went to Afghanistan, went to Kabul, we got on a helicopter, went to Jalalabad, and he, while, while there, uh, promised to build a college of agriculture, a new building. So when it got time to build the new building, we, had, we didn't have any expertise in that community, so uh, uh, Ishak came to our rescue and led that project. We had staff there as well, but uh, Ishak knew how to, how to work with contractors, how to make sure that everybody did a fair job in, uh, in construction of the building. Amazingly enough, that building is a beautiful building. It stands today. But in those days, you worry, you know, if you build a building, will it get shot at it? Will it, will it uh, attract uh, conflict? Will it attract attacks? But it, uh, we put it in the name of one of the famous leaders of uh, Afghanistan, um, Minister Wakil, who was the Minister of Agriculture and greatly beloved by all the people. Well, anyway, so I'm going to ask um, uh, Ishak to talk to us a little bit about his major program in Afghanistan in polio eradication. He is the president of or leader of Rotary uh, in Afghanistan for polio eradication. He holds international offices with uh, Rotary International. He travels from time to time representing Rotary International. So we're really happy to have you stop by. Thank you. Uh, you can yeah, stand here and I'll give you Thank you very much, Dr. Price, for uh, my introduction. It was really an honor for me to work for Bolag Institute for the team in Afghanistan. The work that uh, Bolag Institute did with the, for, with the construction of this agricultural college of Nangarhar University and Herat University, that, was, uh, that is something which has a kind of multiplier impact on, on, the, on, the, on the human resources generation uh, for the country. And those two buildings are still st the state-of-the-art buildings, still standing there and still provide and supply professional uh, agriculture personnel to serve in the public and private agriculture sector. Coming back to my responsibility, it's, it's rotary. These, this is one of the crossing points uh, in, uh, between Kandahar and uh, Quetta. So the, the kids, when they come in or go out, the incoming and also the outgoing children are vaccinated there. Because we want to, most of the cases in Afghanistan, they are like links to, to Pakistan. So that's why we have a lot of crossing points. It, it, later we would show you the, the crossing points that we have with Pakistan. This is the, uh, the, the map of Afghanistan. Uh, it's Kandahar. We have this long border from here up to that Barakshan uh, with Pakistan, which is like 2,340 kilometers with, with Pakistan. And everybody is interested to kick out polio from uh, Afghanistan. This is the polio cases worldwide. In 1985, we had like 400 polio cases per day. And uh, now in 2015, we have like 73 cases, uh, which means 53 cases in Pakistan and 19 cases in Afghanistan. 
Nigeria was also an endemic country, but they have not reported polio for the last 18 months. So hopefully they will be certified as polio-free country. The, the last wild, wild, uh, wild polio virus type 2 in the world was uh, eradicated in 1999. So we only have this type 1, which is circulating in all these endemic countries. This is the situation of, of polio uh, in 1999 to 2015. Like, we had polio, like, a thousand cases. In 1988, we have 1,000 cases per day, which means, like, we, we were almost 350, 360,000 cases a year. It has come down to, like, I'll go back. So these Americas, they were polio eradicated. They, they were declared polio free in 1993. Some parts of Europe in 2002. Some and between 2012, India became that. That is a success story, especially for the Rotarians and also for the polio eradication partners. That India, with that population became polio-free in 2002, uh, 12, sorry. We have only three countries. We, in 2015, we had only three countries, Nigeria, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. So the, the rest of the world became polio-free. But Afghanistan and Pakistan, they, they reported polio viruses, and Nigeria remained they, they did not report any, any polio viruses. So uh, the only countries that they are reporting viruses are Pakistan and Afghanistan, these two countries. Uh, this is just shows some blocks. <laughs> Global cases count 2013-14, uh, uh, in endemic and non-endemic countries. So uh, the total cases in non-endemic countries, in, in, in endemic countries, that's that's important. 305 in 2014, and 2013 it was 85, and in 2013 that was 224, and uh, and 2014 it was 19. So that shows again. Uh, in 2014, the, the, the yellow blocks shows the, uh, the cases, the total cases of the endemic countries. Uh, the total cases, but some of the 82 from the endemic countries means Pakistan, Nigeria, Afghanistan, and uh, non-endemic countries. There are some other countries that they have also reported uh, polio, like 12 cases altogether. In 2014, we had 94 cases. And then uh, uh, in 2015, Afghanistan. Th th these, are, these are just the confirmed polio cases in 2014. 2014, we had 28 cases. These are just the specifics, uh, the, the, the epidemiology, province, district, date of onset of paralysis, fever, uh, sex, age. And that shows. Those two columns shows the routine and SIAs that whether they have received the OPV drops, the oral polio, uh, polio drops, or the routine. Routine immunization is done through the clinics or the district health services. So uh, some of them got some 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 uh, vaccines, but uh, and these are these are the cases, the 28 cases that we had in. Uh, 2014. Uh, that's Afghanistan. We had uh, in central Afghanistan in 2013, we had one case, East 12, South 0, South 1. South means Kandahar, Helmand, and these provinces. East is Nangarhar, Lagman, Konar, and these provinces. So altogether in 2013, we had 14 cases. 
confirmed polio cases in 2014, we had 28 cases. And thanks God, there, there was a decrease by 30% in 2015. We have 19 cases. And then uh, the partners, the government, and also the donors, they have uh, a strong commitment uh, to stop the polio, polio virus till June 2016. These are the number of districts uh, which reported uh, polio from uh, in different provinces. Uh, that, these are the AFP cases. Uh, I think you people will know this, acute flaccid uh, paralysis. These are the reported cases, which, which, is, which is important. That's, that's, there has to be a strong surveillance system uh, for, uh, because that, that helps to, to, to prevent and eradicate polio. That's the com compatible polio cases in Afghanistan in 2014. That's the isolates, P1 isolates, polio 1 isolates by, by genetic clusters between Pakistan and you see that's Khyber Pakhtunkhwa then Nangarhar in the east and also that's Quetta, Kandahar and so these are just like one epidemiological block. So it's the, the, there are also movement, and there is also the movement of, of the viruses. Uh, these are the clusters. And this is, this, this is in 2015. That was 2004. Now we have like 10 cases in the east, uh, in uh, Nangarhar and also Konar provinces, uh, one case in Helmand, one case in, uh, this, this map is a little bit old as I, had, I have not updated this, but altogether this year in 2015, we had 19 cases. 10 cases, was it was like an outbreak in the east and mostly these cases were in accessible areas, which means insecure areas that, uh, the vaccinators, the teams, the coordinators, the supervisors, and nobody had access to, to go there and to, to vaccinate. In some areas, the Taliban, they allow, for instance, if there is a ban, through the access negotiation, you could, you could go, you could talk to them, and uh, they, they will allow the vaccination. But the new group, which is dominant in four districts, the Islamic State group of Khorasan, they call it, uh, they don't allow education, they don't allow uh, clinics, they don't allow, and that, that has a, a, a negative impact on the, the success of the program itself. So that's why most of these 10 cases in the East, uh, they were reported uh, from the inaccessible areas. And uh, even in Achin, four polio cases were confirmed and reported, so the dad was like a commander of the Taliban, and he advised his, his wife that I will divorce you, I, 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 or I will kill you if I'm not there, and then you vaccinate my children. So, and later on he becomes the, and then that mom takes them, I, I saw that child. She brings, brings the child to Shinwar District uh, Health Center, and she was desperate for, for, for me, she was running behind everybody because that's, that, was, that was their kid. And uh, now they knew that uh, it's, so but, the but th that's a propaganda, that's a propaganda that's, uh, uh, this polio drops sterilize people. That's the design and plot of the Jews and also the Christians to sterilize the, the people in the Islamic world. So in that, to be honest, that began, this propaganda began when the time that uh, Osama bin Laden was in, in uh, Ibatabad. So there, the CIA and also there was an American doctor, Shaquille Afridi, he formed some groups of fake vaccinate, wa wa vaccine campaign groups and they were trying to, to collect some DNA from the the Osama bin Laden, to which 
could testify that he's living there. So when he was captured, he was, he was killed there in Abbottabad. So that became a source of antagonism by, by, by Taliban and by those folks to against this vaccination. Because in some areas, the mentality is like, yeah, you, these are all spies. These are all spies for Christians. These are all spies for, for Jews. In some areas, even if they allow the vaccination, they say that we don't allow door to door because you are spies and you would be collecting information about, you can, you can have a fixed center, the kids will come to you, and that is difficult for, for the program because you have to go door to door, you have to vaccinate each and every child, newborn, baby, sleeping, everybody in the family, especially under five. So that's the negative propaganda and from where it started. Uh, on that, in the case of that Taliban leader who had forbidden his wife to allow his children to be vaccinated, has he changed his mind now? Uh, you know, I do not know exactly because we haven't met him, but only his, his wife brought the child and okay. then I was informed with some other Rotarians and some fo folks from BMGF and also some folks from uh, WHO and UNICEF. We went to the Chenwar district at quarter, so we, we, saw the, we, saw, we saw the kid. And the mom, I, I know because the, the, you can see the affection of the mom and the child, so she was running behind everybody. She was thinking that he might be a doctor, so he might help. So that was, that was uh, but I don't know about the, 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 the head of the family. You know, that's the border between uh, Pakistan, and there is a lot of movements, 2,400 kilometers border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, millions of Afghan refugees still live there, and there is also visits, cross-border visits. It isn't uh, that uh, for social, the IOM uh, study found that cross-border movements for social and economic purposes far exceeded refugee movements. It's it's more than more than that. Uh, that shows all the bordering pro provinces, starting from Badakhshan. Eastern province, southeastern, southern provinces, so that this long border has like 2,430 uh, kilometers. And these are the crossing points. KPK is Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa, which was north, northwest province in the past, but now they, they have changed the name. It's called Khaybar Pakhtunkhwa. And these are the crossing points with our provinces like Konar, Negarhar, Paktia, Khost, Paktika, Zabal, and these are the districts, but the name of the posts are like for Konar, Nawapas, Hakai, Benshi, Dokalam, and Torham. Torham is in, with Negarhar. Torham is the, the official border which uh, go through this Khyber Pass and reaches Peshawar. So, and that's the main point, the main entry point for, for the people. Yes. For your reference, the place called Nangahar, that's the, that's the province where Jalalabad is located. Yeah, Jalalabad is the capital city of and, the province. Um, Nangahar Islamic University is where Texas A&M had its cooperation. And we hope, we actually we're planning on trying to have some future cooperation there to help build their business school. There's been an invitation for A&M to work on that. Mm -hmm. So these are like in the east, you can see those two provinces, Konar, Nangarhar, there are like one, two, three, four, five, six entry points uh, with southeast, which is Paktia, Khost, and Paktika provinces. Uh, we have like that number of entry points uh, with south, Zabal, and Kandahar. These are two entry points. If, uh, <clears throat> so this is uh, this is very difficult to control, but still, Rotary 
uh, and also with the assistance of the partners, we have teams there, teams in, in these areas that they, they are called uh, polio transit teams. Uh, they are vaccinating children who are coming in and coming, going out to Pakistan. So the pressure is most, mostly on our teams because on the Pakistan side, they are not very much interested and they are not very much uh, effective and uh, working. Like on Torham side, uh, the, our post, our, we have, there, there are three shifts people on the teams are working, but on the other side, there is only sing, a single container is there and the, the guys are just, the vaccinators are selling mobile phone cards and they don't care about it. Children. So 100%, in some points, 100% of the, the workload is on the on the shoulder of the of the uh, PPTs on the Afghan side. On the Afghan side. Just also out of just for information, conduct. We've also Texas A&M has also been invited to help Kandahar University develop a curriculum in renewable energy, and Reed Stevens is working with us uh, to lead that effort in Good. Kandahar. We, that's not final yet. It's just a, we've expressed our interest and we don't know what will happen. So. Uh, the TAG means the Technical Advisory Group in 2000. That, it normally takes, takes place in, in six months time. And, and today and now, they, that, that's the second day of the the second tag in uh, the first tag in 2016 in Kabul. So they emphasized that there has to be Afghanistan and Pakistan or uh, one epidemiological block because this virus does not know, does not recognize borders. It's, it's, it can be, even it can come to the United States, it can come to, uh, and both countries have indigenous viruses. We have one indigenous virus in Helmand, which is circulating there, but the rest is just the, the, the transmission from Pakistan, from KPK, even the two cases in Connor, uh, they have come from uh, Karachi, Karachi mm -hmm. of Pakistan, which is a long distance. And the reason is that most of the people of Connor are working there in Karachi. So there is always uh, a back and forth movement of, 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 of the people so that's why it's uh, uh, Pakistan always receive like a lot of attention. So this was one of the recommendation of the technical advisory group meeting in 2015 that Afghanistan should also receive an equal attention as Pakistan and Nigeria. Most of the the, 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 the PI, PI means Polio Eradication Initiative uh, program has kept most of Afghanistan polio free. Recent cases have been restricted to, there were, this is a little bit old, these, this, uh, there were some cases in Farah in the, in the west, Farah province, which is bordering Herat. Uh, you might be also working with Herat University. Uh, but endemic circulation continues in the south and far out. I mean, the east and south, east remain at risk. At that time, I wrote this, but still, that's why we had some, some, some cases in the east and also southeast, thanks God. Because last year, we had some cases there because it is bordering Waziristan, while, while the Pakistani army had an operation there. So the people migrated to this side of, of the country to host Paktia and other parts. So there were, even they brought some confirmed cases from that side because they were not vaccinated for the last four or five years. Then Rotary, uh, the uh, WHO, UNICEF, uh, we, we planned a, a kind of case response uh, campaign, vaccination campaign, and then uh, we like, vaccinated 28, 29,000 kids and uh, of refugee kids and host of Waziristani people. 
There is always a need for cross-border co coordination and cooperation between Afghanistan and Pakistan. Uh, there has to be a kind of local, like for instance, the East should have a kind of direct cooperation with KPK, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, or the South should have a direct cooperation and coordination of their activities. Even synchronization of some of the, the, the uh, SIAs, NIDs, and other vaccination national, nationwide activities with, in, in this bordering area. To some extent, it's done, but there is a further need to be done. We've uh, some face-to-face -face and also some uh, cross-border meetings of different regions. We arranged that, but still there is there is more need because when I, I'm sure that it, if Pakistan has become polio free, and thanks God in 2013 they they, they had 305 or 306 cases, but in 2015 they are down to 53, which is which is a success, and that's good for us. When they eradicate polio, then we would it automatically be polio free. That's also something uh, about the cross the cross border co coordination and cooperation, collaboration, coordination of all efforts to eradicate polio, strengthening surveillance, routine immunization, and SIAs among bordering areas. SIA, sub-national immunization, uh, so regular meetings between the regions. Uh, as I said, there has to be monthly face-to-face -face or via Skype or Anita th through media meetings between the regions. Means Eastern region with KPK, Southeast with Waziristan and all those areas, and uh, Kandahar South with uh, quit. Uh, this is this is a difficult part. Information sharing for timely actions, because when we do all these things, we have the the base and foundation for cooperation. Then it will pave the way for improving the information sharing. Uh, there is also some problems in uh, in the address uh, of immunity gaps. That also belongs to information. Identify and address immunity gaps in migrants and hard to reach population along borders. There are some, 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 some people that we cannot reach, so that there is a need for information sharing about their uh, immunity gaps. Uh, plans for synchronized SIAs along the border. It is, it is also because if you do something case response or SIA vaccination here on this, then on the other side at the same time, uh, we, should, we should be doing this because that would be more effective to prevent the transmission and to, to upgrade the immunity in the communities. And that's the current PEI structure, uh, the 2015 structure in Afghanistan. Uh, the Minister of Public Health is just like responsible for this management level. Uh, senior, he has appointed uh, a very good person, very dynamic person, is the focal point for uh, polio. Uh, and under him, there are two types of meetings, weekly meetings, uh, monthly meetings, weekly operation meetings, which is very much needed uh, with PI implementing partners, which means UNICEF and WHO, national EPI manager, WHO and UNICEF. These are the, 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 the implementing partners. In the monthly coordination meetings that I always attend, uh, USAID, uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, Australian Aid, CEDA, uh, and uh, Two, three other organizations we, we uh, attend this meeting with, with, with the minister. So with the, the focal point with the minister and then the decisions are then reported to the minister by the focal point. 
there are different different forums that uh, we work. Uh, polio policy dialogue has been established, and they they meet on a regular basis. Polio partners and donors regular quarterly meetings. Uh, uh, the, the, uh, I talked about this appointment of senior advisors. EUCs, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they provided funds and also technical support. They trained, they, they brought in an expert from Nigeria who was uh, an employee of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and then he trained the EPI managers the, and also the public health directors of different regions and also uh, central ministry. And immediately in November, the, the EPI, the EOCs, emergency operation centers were established. Rotary is part of that. Rotary, uh, because they regularly meet and then they have these dashboards, they have this information sharing and then they react on time to whatever is needed. When, when there is a shortage of, for instance, vaccine in, in one province, then immediately they arrange that from the central cold chain management system and send it to supply to, to that province. So a lot of good decisions are taken in the EUCs. There are, uh, and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation provided funded funds and resources uh, for this. So there is one central EUC, one in Nangarhar, one in Kandahar, one in Herat. So there are four subnational EUCs and one. Uh, and then I'm also part of this high council meeting, which is, uh, the line ministries, Ministry of Public Work, Ministry of uh, Rural Rehabilitation and Development. This is normally with the partner, with the donors. Donors, WHO, UNICEF, uh, ministry, and the, the president himself has also a focal point. He is a medical doctor. He is uh, graduated from one of the medical schools in the state. Uh, he is responsible for this high council. So while it, it's, it's more, the technical work is done at the ministry level. This, more, th this is more advocacy. If we have problems uh, at the provincial level with, with the mullahs, with the religious leaders, so the problems also are normally solved through uh, the high council and the, the office of the, the, the president. These are strategies for polio eradication, strong routine immunization, supplementary uh, immunization activities, which is SIAs, uh, sensitive and responding AFP surveillance. So that, that's also part of the strategy which help in uh, uh, polio eradication. Communication. Uh, awareness is very high about polio, but knowledge due to uh, a CAP survey uh, that's called uh, knowledge, practice, and attitude survey mm -hmm. uh, done by the Harvard University, uh, and Rotary paid for that. So uh, the, the survey shows that the knowledge about polio disease and OPV is poor. Uh, trust in vaccinator contributes to the commitment to take OPV. Health workers are the most frequent and trusted sources of inf information on polio drops. And, you know, we don't have electricity all, all over the country. And radio is the most frequent source of news and trusted media for information about polio. Uh, for, the, for, for your information, we have uh, funded the communication. Rotary has funded the communication through UNICEF because operation is totally the responsibility. I, I, Turn it off. Okay. Uh, operation is totally the responsibility of WHO. Operation means vaccinators, their payment, vehicles, whatever, and communication is the responsibility of uh, uh, UNICEF. Through UNICEF, we have uh, uh, a contract with Voice of America and also BBC. So they are broadcasting some soap operas and some Pashto uh, and Dari programs to the Afghan audience, so that's that's where they 
they uh, just communicate the messages. In the meantime, in, through local radios, I personally do that. Like, we contract the local radios and we give them the, 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 the polio spots and uh, the polio messages so they uh, frequently, uh, especially before, <laughs> and before the, the campaigns, they broadcast them. That's our role. We are part of the EOCs. We participate in all donor quarterly meetings, BMGF, CEDA, OSAID, USAID, EU, World Bank, JICA. Most of BMGF uh, and also they, 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 they fund like the operation part, but Rotary provides funds for operation, both for operation and communication. Uh, USAID provides for funds for uh, uh, the, these uh, routine immunization. Well, we're getting a little bit close on time, so oh, okay. you okay. say a few words about security and then we'll have some questions. Oh, okay. Okay, I will show you just, oh. The major challenge is security and inaccessibility to the AGAs, we call it AGE. Taliban and their different local leadership decisions because there is no one decision. If, if Mullah Omar or the new leader of Taliban decides that we allow vaccination, but at the lower level, at the district level, at the cl cluster level even, they say, no, we, it, it's banned. We don't allow vaccination. So it's, it's a major challenge for the program and for us. IS, uh, the IS, the Islamic State is another threat to the program, especially in the eastern parts of the country. Uh, they have three or four districts under their control, and uh, they don't allow anything, let alone vaccination. They don't allow education, schools, uh, clinics, whatever. When, when, then, uh, when there is no vaccination, there is no routine immunization, when it's nothing. Uh, in the meantime, there is always a competition because fight between Taliban and the Islamic State people. Uh, they say that we are, we are the right people and Taliban say we are the right people. So there is always fighting. And a good example, a few days back in Jalalabad, I was there. So there was a fight in Achin district and also in, in uh, Chaprihar district. So. You, you won't believe that when they capture one, one another. So they immediately, without any question, they behead them. Like in Chaprihar district, in one place, 10 Taliban were captured by IS people, and they were beheaded. And uh, in, in uh, Chin district, in another district of Nangahar province, uh, they, some, some IS people were captured and they were automatically beheaded. So that's something which is, uh, which, which has a negative impact because our services, uh, we are neutral. We, we don't want to be part of any side and especially Rotary is impartial. And as a whole, I can tell you that Rotary has so far provided 1.6 billion US dollars to this polio eradication initiative all over the world since. And Rotary was the organization which formed this global polio eradication initiative, G uh, GPEI. Uh, and just recently in the IPPC meeting, I was also there, so they approve, approved six million dollars, three million dollars for operation to WHO in Afghanistan and three millions for communication and also cold chain support for uh, UNICEF. So the, the major contributor to polio eradication efforts is, is Rotary. I, and I'm proud to be uh, a, a member of that organization. Let me ask you a, a question about your management because Afghanistan is regarded in general through government circles as being sometimes money leaks away. You know, money's not handled well. But I imagine that through your effort, through Rotary, 
you make sure that the funds are well spent and there's no leakage, there's no corruption and so on. Could you talk a little yeah, bit? Yeah, yeah, there was corruption. In fact, after the establishment of the EOCs, uh, we established some, some teams. Like, the, the volunteers, uh, the vaccinators, volunteers, the vaccinators, the supervisors, and the, the, the coordinators in, in, in one province, they, they, they nobody can, can do corruption in their salaries, but the main corruption could be done in the vehicle. So now we try to, to, to just put an ending dot. I'm a member of that committee, ending dot to the physical money. Because in the past they were bringing money, they were <coughs> taking Fs, like $1 is equal to uh, 68 Fs, and $1 in the meantime is equal to 107 Pakistani rupees. Like one vehicle, they were getting 1,800, uh, Afghanis a day, but they, these guys were giving them 1,000 Pakistanis a day. So look at the difference. It was, it was like 60, 50, 60 percent corruption. So now we have a joint committee, BMGF, Rotary, UNICEF, WHO. And now, especially in, in eastern provinces, uh, then uh, we issue checks. Any one of three organization can, can sign those checks, give it to, and then they have the district governors, DCOs, DPOs, and also DPHOs, these district communication officers, district polio officers, district health officers, which belongs to the government. So there we, we established a team there. So when these checks go there, the, and then in the meantime, we, uh, we have the phone numbers and also the profiles of all the drivers. So this is, this is the way that we, we prevented the corruption. And the most part of corruption was done in the vehicles and the transportation. Do others have questions for uh, Mohammed? Sir, I was going to ask if there are any initiatives aimed at bringing religious leaders and um, um, traditional leaders to the round table just to discuss with them because they are able to influence the people a lot. Very interesting, very good question. The, uh, uh, the Islamic Development Bank, uh, Rotary, BMGF, we are trying to, to bring uh, a, a, like a national conference of the religious leaders because the idea has come from, from Pakistan. Everybody is against these polio drops. So, Based on the, the, um, uh, the Islamic religion, uh, we are trying that they should, they should issue a fatwa, that it's not haram, it's, it's, it's halal, it's, it's nothing. Because all the Islamic countries, like Saudi Arabia, one of, this, that's interesting. One of the, uh, I had a, a, a seminar, like a seminar with 300 university students of private, and, and one of the guys told me, the, the color of the drops are pinkish. It means that the, the, the Jews, he was a student, he was an educated person. So I have heard that uh, they have added some pig's blood in it. So <laughs> I said, uh, uh, do we know Islam better than the Saudis, the, the Middle East, or the, the, the Arabic speaking people? So he said, no, yes, Islam has originated from those countries. So I said, they are vaccinating. In case even if, that if there is a, a pig's blood in it, so that will save the life of your children. And Islam allows this. Because when you are hungry and then there is a fear of death, then you can, you can eat any type of meat and any type of any thing. So, they are vaccinating their children. They know better Islam than, than us. So that's 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 misconceptions, um, which should be, and we are trying to, to to tackle that. And we are just in the end game stage, and hopefully we would be able to eradicate polio. 
And thanks, that, 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 that was a very good question. Yes. Okay. Um, so, you mentioned like you, you partner with Kandahar uh, University and like, all these other institutions, UNICEF, uh, WHO, et cetera. Um, to what extent do you actually recruit um, locals? So like um, local community like volunteers or even people who can educate other people through yeah, that, that's, that's also a very good question. Uh, it, it takes time to explain the whole system because the volunteers come from the same locality, from the same communities. Even the, the supervisors and also the, the, the coordinators come from the same, same, same locality. It's, it's difficult to, to bring someone from Kandahar and just place him there in, 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 in Jalalabad. So, because the person who is from the community, he knows uh, the people, he knows the, uh, the, the village. In the cooperation, we have really uh, cooperation with Kandahar University and also Nangarhar University. They do PCA for us, uh, post campaign assessment. They go randomly select some villages and some clusters. They have their own tally sheets, so uh, they, they check. So those information are, again, checked with, uh, there are two, three surveys that, one of them is PCA, and then uh, uh, WHO, Rotary, and uh, these organizations, we have cooperation with Jalalabad University, uh, and uh, we have some students that they are from, like, Achin, they are from some districts, and uh, they, they could go to their own areas, and then they, they do that work for us. Thank you. Uh, other questions? I want to mention this picture, I think, is this a picture of a Kuchi? Uh, this is, yeah, a Kuchi family, you know, the, uh, that's the, that's the, the, the loads of their house, the, the, the elderly, you know, the, she's, because the, the young, they walk, and when you're old, then you have to, Right on the back of a horse or in the back of a camel. The Kuchi are a nomad nomadic. They are nomadic. That's they are also a special group in Afghanistan, and uh, they need special <coughs> attention, like some other special groups, uh, because they they need some some school system which should be on move from one part to to, to another part. Like in in this time of the year, which is. Uh, the, 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 these nomadic people have come from Kabul because the weather is cold in Kabul, so they come toward Jalalabad. And then in March, they again start, go, goes back to, to Kabul and then to Bamiyan and to central, central parts of the country. And even though they're a minority nomadic tribe, they provide, a, what I understand, uh, about 70% of the meat supply in the yes. country comes from the Kuchi, yeah. from their uh, uh, nomadic uh, tribal uh, activities. And they are a little bit more, um, women have a prominent role in Kuchi society, yeah, as I yeah. understand it. Yes. They have a much a, a better role than, than a typical, more conservative uh, yeah. community. Great. Any other questions? But one point, I have a friend, she, she's from Chicago, and she said, I love these coochies. And, I, and, I, uh, and once she was just joking with me, and I said, I will marry one of these coochies. And I said, they, they have a very tough life. They have the, 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 the worst life, and it's, it, it's difficult because we have two million nomadic tribes which are always on move. Mm -hmm. Summer, spring, fall, so, but the life is tough. Like especially when, when, when the women are pregnant and they are on the move, they, they go to just hide in a place and then give birth to a child and then wrap, wrap it in, in a cloth and then take it with them. So it's, it's, it's tough life. Uh, Texas A&M had a seven-year project in uh, working with the Coochie to help direct 
them toward better uh, grazing practices and more um, uh, and, and actually better livelihoods for, for themselves and their animals by using photographic uh, satellite imagery to understand the, uh, the condition of the grazing lands and to move and help direct them in moving around the country so as to protect the grazing lands as well as to find good, good grazing lands for themselves. Any other last question? Well, let's all give uh, Muhammad a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much for visiting with us. If anybody wants to stand, uh, stay around for a few minutes and ask uh, any further questions, you're welcome to do so. Thanks, all, thanks everyone for coming. Thank Come you. <laughs> Uh, some of you came in a little bit late. Some of us introduced each other. Uh, we're uh, I'm Samir Barfield. I'm an uh, Afghan student here at the Bush School. Fantastic. Oh, oh excellent. Yeah, okay. Where are you from? What part of Afghanistan? Uh, Nagarhar. Nagarhar. Okay, cool. Which, which part of Nagarhar? Uh, the Very good. Happy you came. So we learned something every day. That's worth the price of your visit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we greet you. <laughs> That's great. Excellent.